Hello again, everyone. This is Cruise Man out on the 2018 Goldwing. And I'm actually doing a little ride today to go meet a friend for lunch. Uh, you know, one of the greatest things about this 2018 Goldwing is it makes a great commuter bike. I know that everybody thinks of a Goldwing as a touring bike, and certainly the previous uh, generation may end up going down in history as the best long distance touring bike ever built. And I think the jury's still out on this Goldwing, the 2018, as how capable it is as a long distance touring bike just because of the luggage capacity. But nevertheless, I had the opportunity this, this week to ride a 2016 Goldwing with only 5,500 miles on it, and it's the first time I've ridden a previous generation Goldwing since I've started riding my 2018. So it offers an interesting comparison now that I had the chance to go back and ride the previous Goldwing. The first thing I noticed, obviously, is how much bigger it is and how much heavier it feels. But what I also noticed was how harsh the suspension was on the handlebars, how much feedback you get through the handlebars from the suspension. Now, that doesn't mean the ride is that bad on the suspension because I had a chance to ride on some streets that I have ridden on for years. In fact, these are streets that I ride almost every day, maybe two times a day. And I notice on the previous Goldwing, it really soaks up the bumps better. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. The 2018 Goldwing, I don't know if it's the geometry or the suspension setup or what it is, but it kind of has a pogo stick effect sometimes when you go over little bumps in the road or little dips. It just is like the whole bike wants to bounce up and down. And I don't know if that's a suspension setting or a, or, or a geometry thing, but I noticed on the previous Goldwing, it really soaks up those dips better which is interesting. Even though you get more feedback through the handlebars, uh, it kind of has a smoother ride. But as a everyday commuter around the town bike, I am now very pleased with this 2018 compared to the previous version. This bike is just so much easier to ride. It's so much lighter. It's so much more nimble. It's so much more accessible. The more I ride this bike, the more I like it. Sure, I hate the GPS. That was a huge fail on Honda's part. But um, other than that, I like the size of the bike. I like the styling of the bike. I like the, love the DCT transmission. In other words, I guess what I'm saying is if I had the chance to go back now to a previous model, I don't think I would. I think I'll stick with this 2018. But there's a lot to be said for that previous generation too. They're sure big and comfortable on the highway. And I haven't done that yet. I'll be doing it next month. I'll be taking a trip, my first road trip, so we'll see. Since my last moto vlog, I've had the opportunity to install a few more accessories for CycleMax.com. And uh, I'm gonna give you a quick plug. I really like CycleMax. I've been buying stuff from them for years. There's a lot of good vendors out there. A lot of good aftermarket vendors, but I buy a lot of stuff from CycleMax.com. They just give good service, good prices, and uh, good people. But anyway, since my last Moto Vlog, I installed the XM antenna. Some of you have seen the video, and it's a <laughs> very extensive installation, as are all of the installations, really. But the XM antenna is installed. I have not set up my service yet because I know I get 60 or 90 days free, and I want to wait until I start doing some long-distance travel before I 
hook it up, so I'll probably hook it up next month. But it works. I don't know if you have to buy the Honda XM antenna for $99. I think you could buy any XM antenna, you know, off of eBay or Amazon for 15 bucks, and you could probably find a creative place to install it, and you wouldn't have to go through all the grief of pulling the whole front of the bike apart to install it, but I went with the Honda option because I like the little mounting bracket. Of course, you could fabricate a little bracket, I suppose, if you wanted to. I also had the chance to install the Homelink garage door opener. Now, this is actually a, a cool accessory, but Honda engineered it in such a way to make it as difficult to install as humanly possible. You literally have to take a lot of the bike apart, much of the bike apart, to install this product. Why Honda could not have mounted this, it's just a little bitty box, doesn't weigh anything, why they couldn't have mounted that under the right side cover as opposed to in the top of the right saddlebag, which means you have to take all the trunk parts off, you got to take the rear fender off, because you have to be able to remove the saddlebag, you have to be able to pull it out about an inch to get the cable to where it hooks into the bike's harness. I mean, it's just really a nightmare. Then you have to take off the front of the bike because you got to be able to take off the console, which has all your buttons on it. And um, Honda built this bike, I would say, from the inside out. So they start on the inside, and they just start laying parts on top of each other. And that means to get to that center part, you got to peel off all these outer parts to get to it. So it makes it quite time consuming. It is doable, and it is doable by a DIY person, but it's just going to take a little more time and patience. But anyway, got the home link installed. And, and by the way, a side note, the instructions that come with all of these accessories from Honda is lacking. They don't really tell you how to remove these parts. And the most obvious one is the center console, which is a very expensive part if you break it. And don't ask me how I know that. But nevertheless, all they say is remove as shown. And they show the part basically hovering above where it was mounted. And um, if I, I tried to remove it as shown, by putting candles around the gold wing and having a seance, hoping the console would just rise above the bike as they show it in the instructions, and it didn't happen. So, as with many parts on this bike, you have to use brute force to remove it because they're plastic parts held in place with clips a lot of times. And I would highly advise anybody watching, or I'm sorry, anybody planning to install Homelink or the fog lights to watch my home link video and how to remove that center console. It's very important and Honda should have gone into more detail on how to remove that center console. Anyway, <clears throat> once it's installed, it works incredible. It's very easy to program. I've got a little video coming out soon on how to program the home link. Very easy to program. I have it programmed for both of my garage door openers and both of them work perfectly. So I love the home link option. I just think they made it way too hard to install. Another accessory I like, I think it's kind of a gimmick, but it's this um, LED entry lamps. And these are little LED lights, kind of like puddle lamps. And I think they're kind of cool. Again, it's a pretty extensive installation because you got to take the top shelter off to get to the little areas that where you drill the holes for the light to shine through. And yeah, they don't put out that much light. Like I say, it's kind of a gimmick, but I just think it's kind of cool. Now, the problem I have with it is ever since I've installed it, and, and let me just explain how the puddle lamps or the entry lights are supposed to work. When you walk up to the bike, 
with your key fob in your pocket. When you get within about five to seven feet, you'll notice the, uh, the bike is supposed to unlock, all your saddlebags unlock, your trunk unlocks, and there's a little light on your ignition switch that illuminates to let you know that everything's unlocked and that you're now in range and the bike is ready for you to start it and do whatever you want to do. But ever since I've installed these puddle lamps, that works intermittently. Now the saddlebags still unlock when I approach the bike with the fob in my pocket. But the puddle lamps only come on every now and then. And the little light on the ignition switch only comes on every now and then. I'd say about two out of three times it works, one out of three times it doesn't work. And I don't know why. I don't know why the bike doesn't recognize the key fob and light up the ignition switch and light up the LED entry lights. Especially since it recognizes me and unlocks the saddlebags in the trunk. It's a mystery. And I've talked to some other people that have installed these on their bike and they have the same problem. So there is a bug in this system, this key fob recognition system, that needs to be addressed by Honda. So if you get the LED entry lights and you walk up to the bike and the lights don't come on, don't be surprised, it can happen. It's ha it happens to me all the time. But I think they're a kind of a cool little feature. And if you're taking the bike apart anyway to install all your other stuff, you might as well install that too. The other item I installed is the optional USB cable. And I haven't put the video out on this yet. But this too is one of those items that unless you need to recharge something with a USB cable and you don't want to use the one in the cubby, uh, I'd skip it. It's way too difficult to install for what you get. You've got to basically take the left saddlebag, remove it an, an inch out. You have to pull it an inch out, which means you have to take all the trunk parts off, just like you do for the Homelink system. It's just a pain in the butt to install. And with very little benefit. And when I went to my radio in the trunk, the connector for the optional USB cable was different than what they showed in the instructions. The shape was different and I have yet to been a be able to remove it. Um, I have an issue anyway with my fingers. My fingers aren't real strong and I have a little bit of arthritis in my fingers so it's hard for me to squeeze things in a tight space and get enough pressure with my fingers to remove these little plugs and I was unable to get it to come out. Now. I may try again next time I have the seat off. I may try to get in there with a tool and get underneath there because the, the little tab that you have to press on is underneath the, the uh, dummy plug. I assume it's a dummy plug. It doesn't look like any of the other dummy plugs on the radio. So hopefully it is a dummy plug. So that's my only complaint on the accessories so far is I was unable to get the dummy plug out on the radio to connect my USB, my optional USB cable. But I got the cable installed. It's in the, it's in the left saddlebag and it mounts in a nice place up in the top of the saddlebag. Of course, if you use it for anything, you're going to have to put probably an extra cable on and you probably just going to have to have your phone or whatever it is hanging in the saddlebag to recharge, but that's just life on a two, 2018 Goldwing, but <clears throat> it is a nice option if you, if you need extra charging capability. I'm not sure yet if you can do anything else with that optional USB cable. I don't know if you can listen to a thumb drive on it. I don't think you can. I think it's strictly for charging. Again, there's almost no documentation on any of these accessories, so they don't really explain what they do or how they work. But I've got it, and I got it installed, and lots of videos, new videos that I have on my YouTube channel for these accessories, and some of you guys are attempting these things on your own, and I encourage you to try that. However, a lot of you, when you watch my video on how to install something like Homelink, it convinces you you'd rather have the dealer do it. 
because it, it is pretty daunting. And something like Homelink, if you've never worked on the 2018 Goldwing, probably is going to take you four or five hours just to disassemble the bike and get everything off because it, now, well, if you've done it one time or two times, it'll, it should go a lot quicker. And if you watch my video, it should go a lot quicker. But um, my advice is take your time. If you're even moderately competent with tools and with working on the bike, or if you worked on the previous generation Goldwing and you're somewhat familiar with how these plastic parts go together, I'm going to say you're probably going to be okay working on the 2018 Goldwing as long as you have patience. That's the main thing. You've just got to be patient. You can't get in a hurry. And remember, your option is to have the 18 or 19 year old monkey at the dealer doing it. And he probably doesn't know any more than you do and he probably isn't going to watch my video. So if he's using the Honda instructions, you're probably no better off having him do it and if he breaks apart, you're probably never going to know about it till you take the bike apart and look at it. In fact, this 2016 Goldwing that I just worked on the other day, I took uh, some trim pieces off and I noticed several tabs were missing. They were broken and whoever had worked on it before never replaced them or never fixed them. So I see that all the time when I work on other people's bikes. So anyway, just out for a beautiful ride, it's beautiful temperature day, 71 degrees, no wind. It's just a perfect day to go out for a ride. I'm on my way to meet a friend for lunch, and I thought, hey, this would be a good time to do a little moto vlog. It might be a couple of weeks before you hear from me. I got a lot of stuff going on, working on a lot of new videos, and um, I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to the channel, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do because um, we love your comments. I put out a tips and tricks video on the 2018 the other day and I can't believe how many people have watched it. Incredible viewership. And our YouTube channel also now topped 9,000 subscribers, which is exciting. My goal is 10,000 and um, looks like we're gonna make that. But the key is on that tips and tricks video, make sure you go down and read the comments because some other people that own the 2018 have added some of their own tips and tricks and they've got some great ideas too. So always, always invite your input, your comments, and if you send me an email or send me comments and I mention a video, I'll try to remember and mention your name. Um, again, thanks for watching and for now, this is Cruise Man my third motor vlog. Y'all ride safe out there.